Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Cyber Hashira. Today we'll take a deep dive into PKC11 API. I will talk about data types and some functions which I mentioned in part 1 of PKC11 tutorial. Everything that you learn in this video will help you understand how to code using PKC11 API. Let's begin. I will start this video by first talking about uh, uh, data types. The table that you see has some of the data types defined in PKCS11. You can find this information on page number 11 of PKCS11 manual. Now the link that you see at the top is the manual of PKCS11 version 2.20. Uh, this is a guide that I use most of the time. It is a PDF. I would suggest you to use this PDF because occasionally I will be providing some references as page number throughout this tutorial. So it will be easier for you to find those information uh, if you use the same manual. Anyways, data types. The data types on the left column are just an alias defined in PKCS11. Most of these data types are of uh, same type. They are defined as such for the convenience of a developer. Now these aliases makes it easy for a developer to identify what, store, what is stored inside a variable. For example, a variable declared as type ck slot id can be easily identified as a variable that stores a slot id. Similarly, a variable of type ck session handle can be easily identified as a variable that stores a session handle number. The column in the middle shows the type of data types. As you can see, most of them are either unsigned character or unsigned long integer. And the column on the right shows the type of uh, value that a data type can hold. 8-bit value is a byte, which can be of type character, boolean or UTF-8 character. Then there's a 32-bit numeric data type, uh, which is used for storing numeric data. Let me explain what these data types are used for. I will start with ck byte. Uh, ck underscore byte is used for storing a byte data. Now this byte data can be a plain data which you want to sign or encrypt. It can also be a signature or some encrypted data or maybe a data which has been decrypted or a digest or a key. ck underscore character is used for storing a character. These are letters, digits, uh, special characters, space included. In addition to everything included in a character, ck underscore utf8 car includes symbols and other non-English characters. ck underscore bbool is used for storing a boolean value. There can be two possible values. It can either be true or false. ck underscore ulong is used for storing an unsigned long integer. They can be used for storing a numeric information such as a key size, a data size, uh, a, a slot ID, an object handle, or a session handle. CK underscore session underscore handle is used for storing a session handle number. CK underscore object underscore handle is used for storing an object handle. I will talk about object handle in a future video. For now, just remember that all keys in PKCS11 are assigned a number. When an application needs to use that key, it accesses that key using that object handle number. Every slot in PKCS11 is identified as a number. CK underscore slot underscore ID is used for storing that slot number. PKCS11 also has some pointer data types defined in its API. I don't want to give you a nightmare talking about pointers if you're new to it. Just know that they are useful. There are also some structures defined in PKCS11. These structures carries a bunch of information in them. For example, CK underscore version structure stores the major and the minor version of crypto key. Similarly, ck underscore slot underscore info has information about slot such as hardware version, firmware version, manufacturer, etc. ck underscore token underscore info carries information about a token such as label, serial number, model, UTC time, total memory, free memory, and session count. 
ck underscore session underscore info has information about a session such as slot id it's open on its uh, current state and the flags that are set to it ck underscore attribute has the attribute of an object attributes are capabilities of a key for example a private key may have an attribute of sign and decrypt a secret key may have an attribute of encrypt and decrypt i will talk about attributes in detail in a future video ck underscore date stores a date it stores year month and day ck underscore mechanism has information about a mechanism usage Information that it contains are mechanism to use, parameter if any, and the length of that parameter. I will talk about CK mechanism in a future video. CK underscore mechanism underscore info has information about a mechanism such as minimum supported key size, maximum supported key size, and flags. If you have watched my introduction video on PKCS11, then you may still remember this slide. This is a basic flow of PKCS11 based application which I talked about in that video. Today I will talk about these functions in detail. I'll start with C underscore get function list. C underscore get function list retrieves a list of all PKCS11 functions available in a library. Now this library can be a Windows DLL. It can also be a shared library in Linux or Unix. You can read more about C get function list on page 106. Let's take a look and see how this function is defined. CK underscore define underscore function is used to define a function. It defines what argument a function can take and what that function will return after it has successfully executed. Here, the text highlighted in black shows that C get function list only takes one argument or input and that input is a pointer to a structure which will store the list of all PKCS11 functions. C underscore get function list returns CKRV. CKRV is another data type defined in PKCS11 API. I forgot to mention it earlier. CKRV is used for storing a return value. The green text that you see on your screen uh, shows what a C or a C++ code uh, calling this function would look like. C get function list takes one argument, which is a structure called P function list. P function list is a pointer of type CK underscore function underscore list. C get function list returns CKRV, which is a return value. The return value would tell an application if a PKCS11 function executed successfully or if it failed. CKR underscore OK as a return value would indicate a success. The next function is C underscore initialize. You can read about C initialize on page 102. C initialize initializes a crypto key library. C initialize should be the first function that a PKCS11 application should call. And depending on the hardware implementation, C initialize would do several things. But the two main things it would always do is initialize memory buffer and detect all available slots. C underscore initialize only takes one argument known as initialize arguments. I will talk about initialize argument in a future video related to multi-threading. For now, just know that initialize argument is used to tell CryptoKey library how it should handle multi-threading. C underscore initialize returns CKRV or you can call it return value. CKR underscore OK as a return value indicates everything is good. And here's what a C code for C initialize would look like. Uh, CK underscore C underscore initialize underscore args is the initialize argument that goes into C initialize function as an argument. And C initialize returns CKRV. The next function is C underscore get slot list. You can read about this function on page 106. C get slot list is used for obtaining the list of all slots detected in a system. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that C initialize also tries to detect all available slots and then stores that information in a memory buffer. Well, C get slot list reads that buffer and then gets the list of all available slots. 
c underscore get slot list takes three arguments. The first argument is of type ck bool or boolean. This boolean value tells c get slot list if it should look for a slot or just uh, slots with token present in it. For example, if this value is false, then c get slot list would return the list of all slots. If this value is true, then c get slot list would return the list of all slots which has a token present in it such as a USB port with a USB token or a smart card reader with a smart card. The second argument is of type ck underscore slot underscore id. It is a pointer variable that stores a list of all slot numbers. The third argument is of type ck ulong also known as unsigned long. It is a pointer to a variable that stores number of detected slots. So if three slots were detected, then its value would be three. If no slots were detected, then its value would be zero. And here's what the C code for C get slot list would look like. Uh, C get slot list takes three arguments. CK underscore true is a Boolean value, which means C get slot list will be searching for uh, token present slots. P slot list will store all uh, retrieve slot numbers. And then UL slot count would have the number of detected slots. Next is C underscore open session. You can read about this function on page 117. C open session function opens a session between an application and a slot. Now this slot has to be a slot with a token present in it. Once a session is open, an application would then pass all requests for cryptographic operations through that session. C open session takes five arguments and it returns a return code. CKR OK is returned when there is a success. Some other return code would indicate a failure or a problem. The first argument is a slot ID. This has to be a slot with a token present in it. Flags are used to tell C open session what type of session it should be opening. For example, read only session or a read write session. The third and the fourth argument are used for callback related functions. They are used for providing a feedback or status update to an application. PH session is a variable of type ck underscore session underscore handle. This variable is used for storing a session handle number. The green text shows a C code calling C open session. Slot ID is a slot number. I am passing serial and read write session flag. I am not using callback functions, therefore I'm leaving the third and the fourth argument as null. And I'm passing a variable to store session handle number. Next function is CLogin, which allows a user to log into a token. There are some functions which requires a user to be authenticated. And CLogin authenticates a user. You can read about CLogin function on page 125. CLogin takes four parameters and returns CKRV. The first parameter for C login is a session handle. When a new session is open, a session handle number is returned. You need to pass that session handle number to C login. Now, one thing that you need to remember is that sessions opened on a token has a shared login state. What I mean by that is if you have multiple sessions open on a token, I only need to call C login on any one of those sessions. All other sessions will change to login state on its own. The second argument is a user type. This can either be a security officer or a normal user. CKU SO or CKU user. Third argument is of type UTF-8 character. This is a pin or a password or a passphrase configured for that token to authenticate a user. Fourth argument is the length of that pin. For example, if your pin has eight characters, then the pin length will be eight. Pin length is of type CK underscore U long, also known as unsigned long. Green text below shows C code calling C login. It's taking four arguments and returns CKRV. CKR OK as a return value means successful login. Anything else would mean login failure. The next function is called CLogout. It is the opposite of CLogin. This function logs out a user from a token. And you can read about this function on page 127. 
C logout only takes one argument and that argument is a session handle. I mentioned earlier that all sessions open on a token has a shared login state, which means if an application has opened multiple sessions, then C login on any one of those sessions would cause all sessions to change into logged in state. Similarly, if C logout is called on any one of those sessions, then all sessions would change into logged out state or not logged in state. C logout returns CKRV. CKR OK means logout was a success. Anything else would indicate a failure. And here's what a C code calling C logout would look like. It takes session handle as an argument and returns CKRV. C close session is used for closing an already open session. Once a session is closed, an application can no longer pass any cryptographic request to a token. You can read about C close session on page 118. C close session just takes one argument and that argument is a session handle number which an application wants to close. It returns CKRV. This return value is CKR OK for success. Anything else would indicate a failure. And here's a C code calling C close session. It is taking just one argument, which is a session handle number, and it is returning CKRV. C close all session is another function similar to C close session. As the name of this function suggests, it closes all sessions on a token. Now this function is useful when you just want to close all active sessions. For example, Imagine an application which has opened too many sessions. For some reason, it wasn't able to keep a track on all those sessions. Now by calling C close all sessions, CryptoKey can close all sessions uh, that are active on that token. You can read about C close all session on page 120. C close all session takes slot ID as the only argument. This is the slot ID of a slot from where you want to close all sessions. And here's what the C code calling C close all session looks like. It takes only one argument, which is the slot ID and returns CKRV. C finalize marks the end of a crypto key session after which an application is no longer a crypto key application. Calling C finalize would finalize the memory buffer. C finalize should therefore be the last PKC11 function call. You can read about C finalize on page 104. C finalize takes only one argument which has no purpose. As per the manual, it has been reserved for future use. I just pass null when I use this function. Just like other PKC11 functions, C finalize would also return CKRV. That's all I have for you in this video. Today I talked about various data types and some functions used in PKC11. If you have any questions, then please use the comment section. In the next video, I will teach you how to write a PKCS11 code using C++. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Leave a like to this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.